Elijah Harper's commitment and dedication to asserting and upholding First Nation rights in recognition has helped lay a solid foundation as this hard work continues today. Elijah's drive and actions toward reconciliation will continue to be a legacy for First Nations and all Canadians as we move toward improved and renewed relationships based on mutual respect and recognition. Elijah was the very first First Nation person elected to provincial government, serving the Manitoba riding of Rupert's Land in the 1980s. Mr. Harper was named Provincial Minister of Northern Affairs, Minister in Charge of the Communities Economic Development Fund Act, and Minister Responsible for Native Affairs. He resigned from the Manitoba Legislature in 1992 and was elected as a Member of Parliament in 1993. In 1990, Elijah received the Stanley Knowles Humanitarian Award and was voted Newsmaker of the Year by the Canadian press following his efforts to uphold the Constitution Act during the Meech Lake and Charlottetown Accords. He also received the title of Honorary Chief for Life of Red Sucker Lake First Nation and a Commemorative Medal of Canada from the Governor General for his efforts in the public service. The AFN is grateful to Elijah for his legacy and to his wife and family for supporting his efforts on matters most paramount to Indigenous peoples. Can we call up Elijah's family to speak? Go ahead. Good afternoon, Nishinikazanita Olson Harper. I'm from the Laksul First Nation. I would like to say thank you to the elders and all the chiefs who have um, contributed to this um, memorial to my husband. Um, I would just like to introduce Elijah's family, or some of them, and some friends. Derek Nipanak, friend. Uh, Jennifer Wood, she worked with him on the hill, as did Jeanette Minard. Marcia Smoke, longtime friend. My granddaughter, Annalise Lawford. Beside her is my grandson, Kieran Lawford. Their mother, Karen Lawford, my daughter. She donated a kidney so Elijah could get a kidney. <laughs> and her partner, David and little Kieran. So my family has two Kierans. And um, at this point, I would like to have uh, Grand Chief Derek Nipanak say a few words. Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, miigwech. Bujuno ichi yogi makanak. It's a great honor to me to be requested by the family to share a few words in reflection upon the great accomplishments of a great man, Elijah Harper. I know that there are many leaders here today that had uh, worked with him much longer than I have, but uh, you know, recognizing the, the family asking me to speak on this, uh, on this occasion is a, is a great honor on behalf of the Manitoba Chiefs. It's uh, been some time now since I sat at the table of Elijah and he told me, we don't want any taxpayer dollars. We want our share of our wealth, of our resources, in our ancestral lands. And you know, that's a common, common thread that runs through some of the teachings we've had from some of the great treaty freedom fighters of the last generation. And I include uh, the late Tobasonic Watkinu in that discussion, because he told me that it, you know, when, he was, when he was alive, he said it was our generation that got section 35 in the Constitution. It's going to be your generation that gets our resources back. So there is a common message, a common theme that resonates, you know, from those great leaders who are passing on now. And, you know, when we recognize and reflect upon the great accomplishments, we recognize the ongoing mandate, the ongoing work that has to continue from their contributions. You know, of course, Jim, Jim Sinclair being the, the freedom fighter as well, he contributed, and I knew all three of them very well because I sat and received their counsel and their teachings throughout my tenure, and even before my tenure as a student, as a learner. It's been a great honour to, to have learned from them. You know, we recognise the foundations that they laid in creating the organisations that we now operate from within as Treaty Freedom Fighters. And we recognise that the establishment, you know, of our equity in our lands, 
comes from the reassertion and taking back our lands. That's been the theme of this ongoing discussion today, and it is happening. But it's not happening in these discussion tables that we're having right now. It's happening on the land in our communities. And all of us, over the last number of months, I believe should have raised our pipes and have recognized the great contributions and the sacrifices that many of our people are making as they sleep on the land, on the front lines, and they meet the RCMP head on. They meet the RCMP head on because that's what treaty protection is gonna look like for a while. It's gonna be ugly, it's gonna be difficult, but we must honor the treaty freedom fighters, the ones who went to jail without even being formally charged with anything in El Sebuktuk, the ones who are now standing on the land and the Lub around Lubicon Lake, Chief Bernardo Mignac, of the Barrier Lake Algonquins, and all those who are willing to stand up, the Matthias Colum Cree Nation in northern Manitoba. That's what treaty protection, treaty enforcement is going to look like. And you know where we learn these lessons from? We learn these lessons from the great leaders who we're honouring today. So I ask you to consider that in your deliberations. Recognize the ongoing mandate we have that's been set in the foundations by these great leaders. Kachimigwech, thank you. Thanks, Grand Chief, and all the family members here for those words. The next individual, again, we have a presentation as well. If Lorraine could present that on behalf of the women's and the AFN to the family. Thank you so much.